am Anpu. Welcome to my studio. I didn't plan on becoming a street artist. It happened very serendipitously. I have a master's degree in fine arts with a specialization in painting. And I dreamed about being an introverted studio painter. Painting canvases for the rest of my life is how I imagined my life would be. And it's amazing how a small life event would change that trajectory. I moved to Bremen in 2009. It's a small city in the north of Germany. I had a studio there which I shared with a plethora of artists. Some are musicians, clowns, DJs, and even graffiti writers. Up until then, I did not look at the streets as a potential canvas. In fact, I did not look at the streets at all. I was always looking inward for inspiration, and I mainly painted portraits. Life portraiture was what I was good at. It was through this session of portraiture with a graffiti artist that I started looking at the streets again, started seeing the signs and symbols he was leaving behind, and how they were connecting with the city on a daily basis. And it seemed so archaic and momentary because it almost reminded me when we were kids and we would doodle on walls and somehow we would never take it any further. But it seemed important and pertinent and, and it was in complete discord to what I was doing because I was painting canvases for a potential exhibition or a client and at the end of it it would lie in the back of a storeroom most probably. It didn't make much sense then and even as I moved to Delhi in 2011, uh, I did not have much of a connect imagining that I would become a street artist. I remember cutting my first stencil, walking around the neighborhood with a friend and asking her if she would accompany me because I was reluctant, hesitant, didn't know if I really wanted to do it. Would people like it? How does it even matter? It's just a stencil. But that whole experience of walking down, going through different gullies, talking to people, asking them if I could paint on their walls, you know, five out of ten would agree. And it was actually amazing because we came upon an auto rickshaw stand and one of the guys said I could paint the rear side of his auto. And before I knew it, four other autos were lined up. And that was just amazing because I painted five autos in one day and they even said to me that I would get a free ride if I ever spotted one of them. And it, was un it wasn't until a year later that I did actually spot one of them. But I just had to be out in the streets and things would happen to me and uh, it was obviously affecting the way I was thinking about my practice at that time. Uh, Asa, a friend of mine in 2012, uh, organized this uh, small street art festival in Kidki, it was called Extension Kidki. She'd invited uh, a couple of urban artists from Italy and um, to help build the festival and we'd, we'd invited all our friends as well. Uh, anyone could be a part of it, it was an open event. Uh, it was not funded, everybody pulled in their own money to do the work and this is where I did my first giant big wall. It was a massive 40 foot by 20 foot wall and I remember feeling giddy even just imagining how is it that I was going to gauge this space because I'm used to a two meter canvas and nothing more and this seems so intimidating but I remember climbing up that 25 foot shaky ladder, it was a bamboo ladder. Um, you know, I had to like draw and then sort of come down and then see the whole picture again. It took me almost a week to do it and I never felt more frustrated in my life because you can't, you can't will yourself to learn so quickly as well, but I was so impatient to learn. Uh, I remember when it was over and I finally finished it that I never wanted that feeling to end. The feeling of being on the streets, the feeling of talking to people, different kinds of people. They come from all walks of life and telling a kid some story, telling an elderly person another story, and it didn't really matter what I was telling them. But the point was, I was on the streets and I was painting and I was happy. The flies, the dust, the heat, none of it bothered me. And it reminded me, since when I was a kid, I would always climb trees. My mother would always call me a monkey, you know. And this sense of elevation that I felt while being on a ladder seemed very similar. Um, the feeling of being at ease and in the air. I always wanted to be suspended in the air and then I knew that I always want to keep painting in this manner. Uh, again, it was a, it's a long way before things would happen and I've been painting for a decade now nearly, painted all over the country, I've been so fortunate to be called all over. And uh, what I paint changes with the city, the location, where it's placed, who are the viewers, who's viewing the artwork, all of these all of these things matter to me. I'm not trying to put myself above the artwork and I'm not trying to place myself there. I want less of myself in the artwork. And I don't even care if people think it's done by a man or woman. I rarely sign even. 
all of these things don't matter. And I did not want to come upon these paintings with the same notions that I've had while painting in the studio. I wanted to come upon these works with a more liberated fashion and I want to try out different things. And seemingly I have done that. I have tried numerous styles, numerous techniques, and I'm still learning. And at no point do I feel I've achieved something or I've gotten somewhere. I've just made made painting on the streets exciting for me and I've kept the curiosity and that's why it never amazes me to you know go back and paint again and I'm always curious to know what I'm going to paint next because even I do not know that and I hate labels and categories and most of the time people are trying to put you in one especially like a list for women street artists what does that even mean and why don't men have these labels or tags even I mean, yes, I'm a woman and on the streets, and that's a rarity, I agree, but apart from that, I don't think it requires further introspection. It's enough that I do paint on the streets, and maybe some people find that beneficial or find that they can do it too, and that's great, but I like to leave less of my mark there, and the kind of generosity with which people have uh, adorned me on the streets. I mean, I remember when I was painting in Mahim, I painted this girl hanging upside down from a branch and uh, this elderly gentleman came by and he told me how it reminded him of his childhood and how he would hang upside down from a branch and how happy it made him that I painted this mural over there. And he bought me a box of chocolates and said that he wrote a poem about this as well. It was so touching and moving and I remember every child that passed by wanted to own the work, connected with it in so many ways. Every girl thought it was a portrait of a girl and every guy thought it was a portrait of a guy. And it's to connect a larger kind of audience that I try uh, to do it within my work, try to look for a larger universal connect, like the giant Wi-Fi in the sky, the giant moon that I made. It was made in a dilapidated building. I mean, it was not. It was just not even. It was cemented, but it didn't. Do, it was not even plastered. Uh, but I want to make something that sort of hangs there and sort of makes people feel and feel connected in some manner to that space. And, and I felt the moon was like the biggest Wi-Fi in the sky, so that's what I did there. Um, and yes, like I said again, like. I want to paint something like an asteroid as well as a doormat and I feel all aspects of life belong to the streets and nothing should be of a hindrance to you when you come to be a street painter and I hate bold and garish work, something which fills, fills up the space and make you feel like you can't even breathe. I like works that sort of sit in and sort of fit in in a certain manner, make you feel like it was always there, which is sensible to the background, to the wall texture. And, uh, in, and also, uh, and it's not about painting everything, it's maybe about limiting yourself from painting as well. And you don't understand these things until you paint. So all, all of my learning has come through painting on the streets and that's what I like about it the most. Over the years I've ventured on to making comic books and graphic novels as well. I've self-published two comic books. My latest one is Summer's Children, which was published in 2019. I remember how hard it was to find a publisher and then venturing out to do it by to, to doing it by myself. Uh, it, was, it was a completely daunting task and even now because of the pandemic, I haven't been able to distribute it in the manner that I wished before. Um, but that didn't stop me from doing it and I didn't even think I would become this graphic artist either. So. Um, Nothing in life should be a hindrance to you. I mean, one should always try many things and be open to different ideas. In fact, this book has been picked up by a publishing house in Brazil. And in this year, it will be published uh, in Portuguese with a new size and title. And I'm absolutely thrilled how that came about and having not willed any of it either. Um, so I feel that the main thing in, in life is to stay curious as well as have, have a passion to learn to grow all the time else everything else could seem so monotonous and you'd always keep repeating yourself all the time and to stay curious and uh, be abundantly hopeful that things would happen to you in a, you know, in, a, in a magical way because at the end of it, it's all about connecting to people and uh, having this sort of gusto in you and spreading that sort of love. <laughs>